Hey guys and gals, on this episode of Lady K Sailing, we're talking about something a little more controversial. Well, this channel usually doesn't do this kind of stuff. It is a channel that is known for the truth and sort of the reality of cruising. So grab a cold one and let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about before we get into the nitty gritty gun stuff is uh, sort of the COVID of it all and what Lady K is doing right now. So um, I know you guys saw the last one. Um, it was a PHRF race with Lady K in it. I did it. I do them uh, once a week, sometimes on the weekend too. And the reason for that is I was actually going to go do the North Channel this year and do a whole, a whole season of Lady K up in the North Channel. And there's a couple reasons I didn't do that. The first reason is to get from here to the North Channel or even Tobamori. The easier way is to go the American side, and of course the borders closed, so that was sort of standing in my way a little bit. The second reason is purely financial. Um, I'm obviously back on land right now working to build up the cruising kitty and getting hours in any sort of uh, environment right now that I'm good at is a little bit difficult. So my hours have been cut down a lot, um, I'm struggling to make ends meet. Um, I mean I'm okay and it is what it is, but I'm not by any means building up a cruising kitty. Um, you know, it just is what it is. It's COVID and there's nothing we can do about it. So, um, all that said, uh, next year, hopefully all this, uh, crap is over and I can actually go somewhere. Cause I really want to do a season for you guys up North Channel Way and show you guys how beautiful it is up there in the summer, not in the winter. Anyway, let's get on to it. Um, so we're talking about guns. We're talking about having a firearm on your cruising boat while you're cruising. And I think I want to emphasize this very heavily. This is not a political debate. I don't want to talk about pro-gun or anti-gun or any of that kind of stuff. You are what you are, you believe what you believe, uh, and you do what you do. You do you. Uh, and I think we can all agree that both sides probably have a point. Um, let's just agree that there is a little bit of middle ground and not argue with each other because it's like an age old argument and we don't need to go down that road. And if you have like people have lost friends over this kind of thing and I think I'm on one side of the fence and my friends that are on the other side of the fence, I do see that they do sort of have a point. Now I believe in my points more, but I also believe that they have a point too. Um, but it doesn't change my perspective. So I think that's the, the approach you have to take to this subject, uh, the subject of guns in general, is you may believe what you believe, but the other side of the argument also has a little bit of a point. And if you can accept that, then you won't lose friends over this subject. So that's my little, yeah. Um, so, um, we're not going to talk about whether or not you believe in them or not. We're not going to talk about whether your country has them or not. We're not going to talk about any of that. We're going to talk about guns on a cruising boat going from country to country to country because that is a whole different argument. So, um, I met a lot of cruisers along my travels um, and the subject of guns on board does come up. And before I left, I did do a lot of reading about what countries are cool and what countries aren't with guns coming in and out and things like that. And and how many cruisers actually carry one? Because that's something you want to know before you go. Like, is this normal? Does everybody have a gun on board? Or is it normal that nobody has a gun on board? What's the, what's the, uh, the status quo, if you will? Um, so it does come up with cruisers in different countries as you travel. Like, hey, you know, do you guys have a gun on board? How do you feel about guns on board? It does come up quite a lot. And it's almost like talking about religion or politics. You just don't want to do it. But I will tell you, after a couple of rum and cokes, you end up talking about all three of those things. So, believe me. Um, in all of the cruisers I met, there was only one cruiser who actually had a gun on board. Um, and we're talking about, I, I don't know, three, 400 cruisers that I actually got to know and did more than like have a beer with. Um, and out of all those, only one admitted to having a gun on board. Now he is ex-law enforcement, or I guess currently law enforcement. He was on hiatus, you know, out cruising, doing his thing. He had his kids on board. And because he's law enforcement, he is trained and responsible as sirens go off in the background. That's kind of funny. Um, good timing. Um, anyway, so he is law enforcement. He's trained, he's responsible. The thing's under lock and key. It was a, it was a Glock, as I remember. I never saw it, never asked to, but uh, it was under lock and key and he is trained and permitted to carry it. He's American. Um, that siren's not gonna go away. It, it's kind of fitting though, so I'm not gonna edit it out. Anyway, every other cruiser that I spoke to, and hundreds and hundreds of them, do not have a gun on board. 
And I think that's an important thing to, to point out that out of everybody out there cruising, most do not carry a firearm. Um, and I know you like the firearm folks are saying, whoa, 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 there's a whole bunch of reasons to have one. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that. Um, before I want to talk about that, uh, I want to talk about why not to have one, I guess, because I didn't have one. Lady K does not have a firearm on board. I was not interested in having a firearm on board. One thing I want to say is the Caribbean is very, very safe. Um, as far as wandering around, meeting the locals, going to the establishments, go do your groceries, get your water, all the things that you have to do, hang out at the marina. Um, it is very, very safe and cruisers do tend to stick together. So you're not just going to be you wandering around at two o'clock in the morning in a bad neighborhood in some island in the Bahamas. It just won't happen. Um, odds are you're going to go out to a few establishments with other cruisers. There's going to be 20 of you walking back from the establishment to wherever the dinghies are. So, um, you know, nobody's really going to try to rob you or anything like that. Not to mention the Caribbean is not that kind of place. I mean, sure, like a country like Haiti or a bad... I don't know, somewhere with a bad rep, take your pick, you, maybe you won't feel safe. I was never anywhere I didn't feel safe while I was there, um, specifically there. Um, I know Candace at the time, throughout the Bahamas and all the out islands and things like that, she had no problem jumping in the dinghy, going into town by herself during the day and going and getting groceries or going to the wherever she wanted to go and doing her thing. Um, we both had things that we liked to do and they weren't always together. Uh, most cruisers do stick together and the wives don't go drive the dinghy alone and the wives don't go into town alone. But Candace did. Candace is very independent, very, very strong. So I had no beef whatsoever. If I'm doing boat projects and she wants to go in, go ahead. She takes the dinghy in and I mean, the first time we would go into whatever town we were in or whatever island we were on, it would be both of us because we wanted to explore. But once we explored it, if she wanted to go alone, and I would always be cool with it. So go ahead. I know I got comments on one of the YouTube videos where somebody said, you let your girlfriend go into town, blah, 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 all by herself. And I'm like, let her? Like, she doesn't need my permission to get in the dinghy and go and do her own thing. Um, so there was never a let her. Um, if she wanted to go shopping, she went shopping, like just like you're at home. If your wife wants to jump in the car and go to the grocery store, she goes. She doesn't need to ask your permission. Um, and if she does, there's a problem. So anyway, uh, moving on from that, I think the bigger crime factor isn't you getting mugged because you're, you're going to be with other cruisers. You're going to be doing your own thing. The bigger crime factor is don't leave crap on your deck all night, your generator, your uh, your dig or jerry cans full of diesel and all that kind of stuff. These are hot commodities. Don't leave an outboard on deck. Um, lock your dinghy. Um, these any crime that you hear of in the opportunity or a crime in the Caribbean is a crime of opportunity most of the time. So uh, you leave something expensive on deck and it gets stolen while you're sleeping. You watch the Delos episode where they tried to steal Maggie's dinghy because the thing was hanging there and it's expensive. Um, and if it's not locked or if they can cut the lock, they're going to try to do it. I mean, you're talking about countries where some people have no money whatsoever. So, you know, lock your stuff up. If you got jerry cans and stuff, put them in the lazarettes. If you got an outboard in the lazarette or, or make sure there's obviously a chain on it. Um, the dinghy, I think, um, I have like a 14 or 15 foot, uh, quarter inch chain. It's a stern anchor chain that I had extra. So I'd like 15 feet of that. And that was pad, like on the padlock for the dinghy that was locked to the outboard, so it was on the same padlock. And the other end had its own padlock. I'd get to wherever I was going, wrap the thing around something that you can't put it over, and use another padlock and lock the dinghy up. That way you've got the dinghy, the outboard, all locked together, all also locked to a dock or something. Something that can't be moved, uh, uh, you know. Um, so yeah, don't leave things on deck, lock the dinghy. I think one of the big things is I get a lot of questions from a lot of people that see like these reports of, oh, there's crime in the Bahamas. The Bahamas is a very general term when you see this, like the Bahamas is dangerous this year. You're talking about Nassau and Freeport, both of which I stayed away from. Freeport didn't go to at all. Nassau stopped in twice, got fuel, got out of there. Um, they are huge hotspots for tourism. You have these huge cruise ships coming into both places all day, every day. And yeah, people are mugging the tourists, but these are very large cities as far as the Bahamas is concerned. And there is like a lot of crime of opportunity. They see a tourist walking around 11 o'clock at night, it's dark, nobody's around and they mug them. Um, and that's, you're seeing reports of that. The out islands, not Nassau, not Freeport, the out islands, Georgetown, Bimini, all these different places, uh, Freeport, um, it's just it, all these amazing places. And there's, there's just, there just isn't this crime. The Bahamas is set up in such a way that all their money comes in from tourism. So if they try to do anything to some tourist, 
like they'll get severely penalized for it. So I don't worry. I was never worried in the Bahamas. Actually, in the Bahamas, we stopped locking the dinghy. We locked the dinghy all the way through the U.S. In the Bahamas, as soon as we got there, we stopped locking it. Um, and most of the time, we didn't even put the companion board uh, companion boards in or the lock on the companion way. So, I mean, that's something to think about. Um, is they will get severely punished. I think in all the travels on Lady K uh, last year, the scariest place I ever was was not a third world country. It was not an out island where only 50 people live and there's no police. It was actually Miami. Miami, where you, where you put the boat, um, the best place to sort of keep the boat, is a very busy, very uh, high foot traffic area. So when you, you put out a mooring ball and you bring your dinghy in, every single dinghy has chains and padlocks. That was scary to me. So the boat was always locked. The dinghy was always locked. The big chain was around. I would put the chain through the dock board and around the, the joists, if you will, of the dock. Um, that was scary. Miami was scary. But as soon as I got from Miami to Bimini, Bimini's the next stop. As soon as I got to Bimini, I was like, whoa. Like, it's totally chill. The atmosphere is totally different. And I know, like, there are some stories about, like, crime happening. And yes, Somalia. Yes, uh in Thailand, yes, uh, yes, sure, in some places in the Caribbean. There have been sailors that have been held up or sailors that have been accosted in some way and stuff has been stolen, yes, 100%. There is crime everywhere. I'm not saying it's crime-free at all. Um, but I heard one story that really, really set it in for me is that there was a couple that were cruising, world cruising, not just Caribbean, everywhere. And I don't remember where this happened, so forgive me. But they had a firearm on board, a handgun, and it was up in the bee berth, locked in a lockbox, all that kind of stuff done properly. And um, somebody was approaching the boat in the middle of the night. So the husband went out into the cockpit, big floodlight pointed at them and started, they were yelling at him in some other language and he's yelling back at them trying to scare them. And they were like, they were not approaching any further than 15 feet or so. The wife got scared, unlocked the lockbox, popped out um, the hatch and the bee berth and pointed the gun at the guy, the two guys in the boat and the guy at the front of the little skiff that approached them, immediately pulled out a gun and shot her. And she's dead, done. So um, maybe that would have happened anyway. Maybe her pointing the gun escalated it. I mean, think for yourself on that one. I think that, I think, you know, in that situation, she should have been cool and let the husband handle it. And he could have got on the, or maybe she could have been inside on the radio, um, you know, start shooting lights everywhere so everybody sees them. Uh, blow the air horn, shoot flares. Uh, she could have done a lot of things other than point a handgun at the potential uh, bad guys. So uh, that's a real story. You can find it on the internet. Um, maybe it's not real because it's on the internet, but uh, it's, a, it's a story that I actually did read and maybe some of you guys have seen it. Um, on to like, how hard is it to go in and out with a gun? So in the Bahamas, um, if you bring a gun on your vessel into the Bahamas, uh, I'll assume that you're coming from the US, because that's this, the path to the Bahamas. So you probably already have a carry permit for the US. Um, uh, so, or a firearms permit of some sort, and you have the right paperwork to have it on your boat. In the Bahamas, they can give you a permit to have the gun there. You have to provide the serial number, the make, manufacturer, and everything with the gun. You have to say how much ammo you have. The gun has to be in under lock and key at all times. It's not allowed off the boat. So is it of use? Sure, um, if somebody tries to board your boat, but that's not gonna happen in the Bahamas. Um, can you carry it around in the middle of the night in the Bahamas? No, um, not without them actually giving you permits and good luck getting one of those. Um, the Turks and Caicos is a little bit different. Um, if you're gonna be there for more than 24 hours, customs will confiscate your firearms and keep them until you're ready to leave. Now, a lot of countries are like that. Um, some countries are like the Bahamas. Some countries will actually seal one of your, your lockers in your boat with the firearm in it. So you can keep it on board, but you're not allowed to break the seal. And they will check on your way out of the country. But every country will give the firearm back as you're ready to leave. So they are, I guess, a little bit lenient about having firearms um, because they will let you have them in most countries. Um, but you do have to jump over the hurdle of all the paperwork and all the jumping through hoops and you know them sticking tape to your nice interior or whatever they're doing and and your gun's going to get in some places they're going to take it and who knows what they're going to do with it um, they're going to be banging it around or dry firing it or something goofing around with it who knows I don't know I just was something that important and and that sort of critical I don't think you want somebody else playing with it um, so there's that I mean you have to be okay with all that stuff um, 
And also, I think one of the big things for every country you go to is never hide the gun. If you have one on board, you absolutely must declare it because if they find it, they will arrest you. So don't mess around with that kind of stuff. Um, I think, yeah, like the, the most dangerous place that I ever felt that I was, was Miami. Every, everywhere else was kind of like, I don't feel like I need to have anything like that. And we're always hanging out with other cruisers and you're never really wandering around alone. And you can kind of get a read on people when you get to an out island somewhere and only 50 people live there. Um, you kind of get a read on who the good guys and the bad guys are. And um, honestly, as soon as we would get to a new place, we'd immediately, whoever was around, we immediately buy them a beer. And guess what? They're going to be watching your boat from now on. Like they, they see that there's a, a, I guess a financial interest in keeping an eye on you because you buy them beer or because you, you buy lobster tails from them or whatever. Spend a couple bucks, buy the lobster tails the guy at the dock is selling. Because the guy at the dock can see your boat and he's watching your dinghy. Buy his lobster tails every single day or whatever he's selling. Boom. Yeah, you automatically have a guard watching your stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a complicated subject and while some people do have guns on board, I think if you're going further than the Caribbean, you should probably maybe look into it a little bit further, like Thailand and anywhere on the Indian Ocean, that kind of stuff. Um, maybe you should look into it a little bit further. As far as I know, I don't know any sailing channel that actually carries one. All the big sailing channels anyway, I don't know any of them that carry one, maybe I'm wrong. but. Um, that's my thoughts on it. That's uh, the information that I have on uh, on guns. Please don't turn the comment section into a gun argument. That's not what this is about. I just wanted to give you some information in my sort of personal experience and and sort of educated um, ideas on whether or not you should have one. If you want to have one, have one. If you don't want to have one, don't have one. Anyway, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And thank you to all the patrons for making everything possible. I absolutely love you guys. See you next week.